Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and it's time for your daily dose of dismal dungeons and dragons and drama and deplatforming. We're going to talk about the situation with TSR Games, which is new, new TSR Games, because there was an old new TSR Games, but now they're not going to be TSR because they don't want to be associated with new, new TSR. It's all very confusing. But what clearly is happening here is that the the newish version of TSR that we've been talking about, that uh, Ernie Gygax and uh, some of the OG crew from you know the original D and D team uh, putting this company together, uh, they're they're basically being deplatformed. Well, not basically, they're totally being deplatformed. In fact, now the Origins Games Fair, another large gaming convention, has joined Gen Con in banning banning TSR games. So this uh, it's pretty much unprecedented as far as I can tell. The only other time I've seen someone get canceled this hard from a convention scene was probably Vic Mignogna. Uh, you know, I, I mean, this is this is just uh, absolutely bonkers. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 203,000 subs, I think. Thank you so much for the support. Do talk about tabletop gaming uh, you know, occasionally. It's not something we talk a lot about. Uh, I myself am a lapsed gamer. Uh, I gamed pretty heavily in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, D&D basic set, uh, and then into AD&D 2nd edition, which I played the most of. Uh, throughout the 90s and then you know people grow up they get jobs they get married uh, life happens and I stepped away from the gaming table for a while and I wanted to get back into tabletop over the last couple of years my kids wanted to get into tabletop and it's a very very different a different industry from what I remember and I'm not talking about inclusivity I'm, I'm not talking about that I'm just talking about the backbiting and the cattiness uh, in this, this industry. And I, I hesitate to even call it an industry. I think, I think, uh, a quote unquote community. And we've seen communities like this in comics. We've seen communities like this in video games and animation, and it's basically a gated community, I think. And it's so ironic because the people doing the gatekeeping are, are the ones who are saying that they're being kept out. And I don't think anyone has kept uh, anyone out of gaming. Um, so that's a whole nother conversation. Let's talk about this. Origins Games Fair, reacting to the TSR situation, going to read what they posted on Twitter, and then I'm going to go back and, you know, kind of recap everything that's happened so far, right? So Origins Games Fair, uh, Origins Games Fair put this out. We're aware of the appalling statements published by TSR Games and their founder, uh, Gamma does not condone nor agree with any part of it. We pride ourselves on supporting and promoting inclusivity. Always. Always. Our motto is a game at every table, a table for everyone. Transphobia, racism, and sexism will not be tolerated. That means that TSR is not welcome at our Origins Game Fair, Gamma Expo, or any event affiliated with our organization. This is crazy. People calling them out uh, in the comments. I'm sure some people are very happy about it, but uh, uh, yeah, um, you know the facts don't matter. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about this because here is what was actually said. So for those of you who don't know, again, a version of TSR TSR Inc. being the creator. Uh, the creators of the original Dungeons and Dragons and a number of other tabletop games, uh, Dungeons and Dragons obviously being the most famous, was started by Gary Gygax and uh, it was sold to Wizards of the Coast in the late 90s and then Wizards of the Coast wound up getting absorbed by Hasbro, the toy company, Milton Bradley people, right? So that happened. And since then, you know, we've talked about before that there's definitely been a change in the, the vibe for Dungeons and Dragons anyway. It seems like it's definitely more Wizards of the Coast than TSR at this point. So 
at some point about 10 years ago, there was another company, another publisher that decided to publish, I think it was Top Secret, a TSR game using the TSR license. I'm not 100% clear on what happened, but apparently they had the TSR trademark because Hasbro just didn't care. They basically strip mined uh, Dungeons and Dragons out of the Wizards of the Coast acquisition. And um, they had the trademark. They lost the trademark. Um, Ernie Gygax and the current uh, CEO of this new version of TSR got the trademark back. And they're using the original logo and they're bringing out a new game called Giant Lands as well as, uh, I think, Star Frontiers. I think it's Star Frontiers. Uh, another classic TSR game. And they're using the original logo. They've got some of the original crew together. And th this, I thought, was pretty exciting news. You know, I did. And the mainstream media really didn't cover it a whole lot. So this is what I want to, I really want to talk about, like, how how we arrived at where we're at. So Ernie Gygax goes on Tales from the Bunker, which is a podcast, and, and they're they're pretty cool. I actually talked to them earlier today, and I think we're uh, they're going to run that show uh, tomorrow. But, you know, he was just, you know, talking shop. And some of the comments he made, he basically was saying, look, we want to kind of, you know, roll the clock back a little bit, maybe bring back some gamers that feel disenfranchised by the current direction of tabletop gaming. Um, and I'll, I'll read his comments. Well, these were taken to mean that they were against trans people. They were against inclusivity, the gaming table. That's not what they said. Now, where I think TSR made a huge mistake was they engaged the crazies on Twitter. And every time you do that, you basically give these people who are trying to cancel you, you're giving them more rope to hang yourself with. And we've seen this time and time again. If Again, with Gina Carano, if she had made a huge tactical error in getting herself canceled, it was probably spending more time trying to slap these people down, you know, than just kind of putting out whatever she had to say and, and moving on. Um, you know, and that was kind of the difference, I think, between her and like Rosario Dawson. They came for her, too, and she just kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, but they want you to. They want they say inflammatory things. They were, you know, throwing out quotes from Ernie Gygax's dad and all this other stuff, you know, and it, it got really heated. Now, we're gonna we're gonna talk about what he said and whether or not these are actually uh transphobic comments and whether or not you know, what was said in response to the attacks on Twitter were, were taken out of context. So <laughs> I love this. Uh, BellofLostSouls.net, which apparently is a tabletop site in this geek native. Um, again, the mainstream media is not really talking about comicbook.com talked about. And that's why I want to, I want to go with this because there's something very fishy about this whole thing. I worked in marketing for years. I worked, I worked for newspapers. I worked in the media for years. I, I know a smear campaign when I see one and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So this is, this is what he said in the interview. Um, TSR has been gone. There's a ton of artists and game designers and people that play. And recently they were dissed for being old fashioned, possibly anti-modern trend and enforcing or even having the concepts of gender identity laughs. Now, where that is probably coming from, there were some artists that were dissed. I think there actually was a magic artist that they tried to cancel, if, if I remember correctly. And I think there was an officially licensed, like an official Dungeons and Dragons puppet show or something that they came after them because the one, the one character had boobs. And it was offensive, you know, so everything offends the audience that that Wizards of the Coast has courted in the last, you know, 10, 5, 10 years, whatever it is. This is, does not sound like he's being anti-trans. It sounds like he's to me. Again, this is my my opinion on it. It sounds like he's talking about the hyper focus on politics and identity politics and gender identity and all of these things that have come up in tabletop that were never in tabletop that really didn't need to be addressed in any official capacity, you know, orcs being racist or let's go publish another, another rule book, uh, just because, you know, we have to make sure that we, we don't have, uh, racism in our game, even though it's only there if you put it there, you know, just a very hyper-focused wizards of the coast 
that crowd has been very hyper-focused on identity politics. They have. And it's turned a lot of people off. It has. That's not untrue. And I don't think that, I personally do not think this was a an anti-trans dig. I think it was more like there are a lot of people, old school gamers, who are like, why are we getting weirdly political with the, the game? That, that's my takeaway. So, I mean, look, maybe there are some things that uh, he said that were maybe kind of a poor, uh, poor choice of words. He was on a live stream. Uh, most people get in trouble on live streams. You know, he's talking about their corporate raiders, kind of like uh, uh, some tribes attacking each other and taking taking the women and the children. Again, current year, this is not something you want to uh, you want to say, probably. Uh, and cooperating with uh, Wizards of the Coast, he said uh, they just put a big disclaimer recently trying to divorce themselves from the ethics and style of play that was involved in the origins of the game. They're basically trying to say we're a better company and a better type of person than those who started playing. At least that's somewhat of the impression they've given. And please switch over and be part of the new wave. You know, join the pack of lemmings. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to, I'm gonna, you know, put this out there, too. Because I, I have seen this, and, and this kind of came up a little bit when, uh, you know, I talked uh, to, the, to uh, Tales from the Bunker myself today. That it feels almost like with Gary Gygax, uh, Ernie Gygax's dad, that there is sort of a, a, a metaphorical tearing down of the statue of, of Gary Gygax because, you know, they're bringing up a lot of posts of stuff he said they didn't like. They're bringing up his politics that they didn't like. Basically, they're posthumously canceling this guy, you know, uh, years after his death. And at the end of the day, and people keep saying, well, we've moved beyond Gary Gygax. I mean, get, like, yeah, but you wouldn't have gaming in its current incarnation without him. I mean, that's what's kind of so disrespectful. You don't have to agree with Gary Gygax or his politics or everything he said, but the man gave us modern tabletop gaming. You at least owe him that much respect. And there is, and this is where I want to go with this. So I think what is going on is that there were people lying in wait to pounce on TSR. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, and there's no offense to Tales from the Bunker at all, but this, this wasn't like, you know, he went on a YouTube channel with like millions of subs and there was a lot of media fanfare, like literally one or two websites covered TSR coming back. Somebody was waiting. Somebody was waiting for this interview. Somebody was watching this interview and at the time before all the, the Twitter drama, it, uh, it didn't have a lot of, it didn't have a lot of legs really. I think it had a couple thousand views or whatever. Somebody was watching this waiting for Ernie Gygax to trip up. And I don't know if it's somebody who has a beef with with them, uh, somebody has a beef with him, or you know, somebody from Wizards of the Coast. Who the hell knows? But the one thing, the takeaway from this, and even if you don't agree with the things Ernie Gygax has said, the takeaway from this is that the tabletop industry <laughs> is really like locked down. Like there's some, some hardcore collusion going on. I, I mean, I kind of wondered before when all that drama went on with the quartering getting punched by that guy and Gen Con kind of turned a blind eye and people were getting banned from Magic the Gathering for asking questions or whatever. And, and you kind of see everybody walking on eggshells. You know, it definitely, this industry is, I would say, probably less of an industry than the comic book industry. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't even know if I want to get back into tabletop at this point. I'm like, is this what I have to deal with? Hell no. I got enough shit to deal with, uh, for sure. I mean, these sites are, you know, pulling up all this drama with, uh, Luke Gygax. So Luke Gygax is another one of Gary's sons, I, th I think from another marriage. And he basically distanced himself from the comments and from this new TSR and, um, you know, it's it's interesting because they're jumping into his timeline, even though he distanced himself. And he said, 
uh, you know, hey, I don't agree with the things that my brother said, and I don't necessarily agree with this new TSR, and I'm not associated with this new TSR, just so you know. Most people were pretty cool about it, but we got, you know, people like this. TSR and Ernie are embracing the bigotry of tabletop RPGs of old and are being snarky to and blocking everyone who questions it. Uh, Luke Gygax says, I wouldn't call D&D bigoted, so I'm not sure I can agree with you, Josh. Uh, then this other person comes in here. Again, these these avatars and names are so on the nose. I mean, we've seen people resist, eat the rich, you know, uh, Orc Lives Matter, I think was one of them. I don't remember. But yeah, here we go. Let's not pretend that D&D doesn't have bigotry baked into it. It absolutely does. From Unearthed Arcana of 2004. Uh, well, that was actually on Wizards of the Coast's watch, wasn't it? So <laughs> you can't blame TSR for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is just an attempt, I believe, again, personal opinion, to metaphorically tear down the statue of Gary Gygax to every beef that every anyone has had with Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop role playing. You know, from a very, very small you know, vocal minority of people, it's all coming out now. I think somebody was waiting to ambush TSR. You know, and I'm not even going to pretend to know everything that's going on behind the scenes or whatever. But I can tell you as, as someone who watches this kind of stuff. We've been, you know, look, we've had this channel for four plus years now. We've been covering this stuff. This is not organic. There are a lot of accounts that are popping up that are, you know, they seem very much like alt accounts. Their names are very much, you know, on the nose, like literally like, you know, trans girl, tabletop gamer who hates fascists and garbage like that. Like nobody's going to actually call their account that, but they're jumping into everybody's timelines and they're demanding uh, cancellation. And uh, again, you know, you don't have to agree with the things that Ernie said. Maybe he could have phrased it differently, but I don't think that uh, he was coming out and being, I don't think he was coming out and being, you know, outright transphobic. And then TSR, you know, they put a statement out and they said, hey, uh, you know, we want everybody at our table. You know, we do. Um, but they also kind of put this out. They said, hey, uh, there's too much wokeness in gaming. I mean, that's an opinion. Now, here's the one that got me. This is coming from the Giant Lands account, Giant Lands being the first game that they're going to release under this new TSR label. And I don't think they're saying what, you know, this is, they're, they're replying to this person. Just say, we here at TSR think trans women are women, trans men are men, and trans lives matter. Stop trying to dodge the questions. What Ernie said had, honestly, I don't think had anything to do with that, but they want a statement. They want to, they want you to bend the knee. If you want to be part of the group, you got to play by their, their games, right? Uh, you got to play by their rules. Giant Land said, you're disgusting. That is being taken as they're disgusted by this person supposedly being trans. I think it's more you're disgusting for you know, bringing this up again and again and again and demanding, just like Gina Carano, demanding an apology, demanding she put pronouns in her bio, uh, etc. Again, if TSR made a, a huge tactical mistake, it was engaging these people because you can't win. They want you. They're going to enrage you because they want you to say something that they can run to their friends at these blogs with, uh, that they can run in and say, Hey, uh, look, look what a bunch of haters these people are. They're defending themselves, but they're attacking people. You know, um, TSR did put the statement out and I think they should have just put it out and left it there personally. But they said, you know, TSR, uh, we here at TSR are very passionate about gamers and gaming. We don't mean to offend or attack anyone and appreciate all the feedback we've been getting from fans near and far. When confronted with disinformation, we have defended ourselves. Our message is very clear and always has been. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome at our table. Uh, everyone's welcome at the table. We will not tolerate rude, hateful, or disrespectful people or bots. You will be banned, blocked, and ignored. Uh, we ask our fans to do the same. Stop fueling the lies and start focusing on the future. Uh, I agree with that. However, it's clear <laughs> in this, you know, we've got uh, Lad Minion bringing up this, this uh, quote from Cyberpunk. By the way, they tried to cancel the creator of Cyberpunk. Do you know that? Until they found out he was a black dude. Because they didn't know. They didn't know the creator of Cyberpunk was a black dude. They tried to cancel him last year, too. Uh, but yeah, all the all the big gaming conventions kind of in lockstep. Just like uh, we saw with uh, Vic Mignogna. 
And it's a very nebulous claim. And I, I think there's more going on. Just like with the situation with Vic Mignogna, I did not see receipts of his alleged wrongdoing. What I think was going on is we had some jealousy, professional jealousy in the industry, and they were looking for a reason to pounce. What I think, again, pure speculation on my part, is TSR is coming back with some of the OG crew. And while they will never put anything out that's even going to come close to D&D, they could pull potentially pull people away from Wizards of the Coast because there are a lot of people who are feeling that, uh, you know, gaming has moved on from them. And what does it matter to you? I guess if people want to go play at their own table and they're not affecting you in any way, shape or form, what does it matter to you that they go do that? If they're quarantined to their own little space and you think they're a bunch of bigots and hate mongers and they're not bothering you, what does it matter to you if they exist? You know, and, and you want to talk about gatekeeping, uh, making sure that, that someone who thinks differently than you or uh, feels differently about the industry than you is not allowed to exist in your community is the worst kind of gatekeeping because that does lead to very bad things. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.